Okay. So yeah, you may have ripped it out yesterday, folks. So make sure you check all your ripped out papers too. Okay. Sorry, I was just trying to. That's that's. Um. So. I wanted to finish up, we didn't get to quite finish up yesterday while we were going through things here, but I do want to finish talking about determining the center and scale of a dilation. All right? So when you have a figure and its image after dilation, you can find the center of dilation by drawing lines to connect corresponding vertices. These lines will intersect at the center of dilation. So if you look here, for example, the example two says, determine the center of dilation and the scale factor of the dilation of the triangles. So you can see here, we very clearly have a dilation, right? There's our original, ABC, and then it blows up and gets bigger, A prime, B prime, C prime. They actually drew in the lines that connect C prime and C, A prime and A, B prime and B. Notice they all intersect at point O, which indicates that O is then the center of dilation. Okay, so you want to label that, you can put that center of dilation. Okay? <coughs> Center of dilation is point O there, where they all, all those lines intersect. Now, the other thing we're supposed to find here is the scale factor. All right? So what's one way, using our rulers, what's one way we could find the scale factor between these two shapes? What would we need to measure here for an example? So yeah, EK, but what could we measure? So from A prime to B prime? Yeah. Okay, and then what else do we have to measure? A, B. A to B. So let's, and let's, and sorry. A prime, this is how the image, do you put that over the image? Uh, correct, yes. You want to put the image, A prime, B prime, over the original, A, B. So let's do that here real quick. So let's measure A prime, B prime using our rulers here and see what we get. So I get... I'm going to say, I'm going to round that to about three, okay? I know it's not exactly three, but just for the numbers to work out nice, I'm going to say about three, okay? And then if I measure AB, I get about 1.5 there, okay? 1.5, so three over the 1.5 there is what he gave us to do, right? We're going to do the image 3 over the original AB 1.5. So A prime, B prime, so scale factor, I guess. Scale factor equals A prime, B prime over AB, which is then 3 over 1.5. Okay? What does 3 over 1.5 simplify to be? It's, yeah, it's just two. Can we do two over one? I like that. Two over one? Okay. Yep. It's image over original there. Image over original. Now, this is not the only way. There are other ways we could have done this, right? So, for example, here, instead of comparing A prime, B prime, and A, B, uh, Kyle, what other two sides could we have compared here? Besides A prime, B prime, and AB, what other two sides could we have compared for the scale factor? CB. So CB and what else? Uh, C, um, C prime and B prime. Yeah, so we could have put C prime, B prime over CB if you wanted to. Now, we're not going to do that, but I'm going to also write here C prime, B prime over CB. Very good. And mm -hmm. let's see here. Uh, uh, Krishna, what other pairs of sides could we have done here? So again, we had CB over C, or so we had C prime, B prime over CB. He came and said A prime, B prime over A, B. What else could we have done here? So be careful. Image the other way, right. So or. Uh, center of dilation right here? Center. Center is what it is, yes. Center. Center. Okay. So we could do that. However, there's one more way, there's actually one more kind of way to do this. If you look back up here at the measurements, the book does, the book measures from O to A, and from O to A prime. So you see that? So this is another way to come up with the scale factor. Notice, the measurement from O to A prime, that's the measurement from the center to the image, is 50. And the measurement from the center to the original A is 25. 
But what if we took 50, the center to the image, and put it over the center to the original? What's 50 over 25? Uh, it's, one half. it's also 2, or 2 over 1. The same as the scale factor we got by using the sides. What about this one? If we go from O to B prime, that's a measurement of 26, and O to B is a measurement of 13. If I do 26 over 13, what's that? 2. Two. Or if I do 38 over 19, that's O to C prime over O to C, also 2. So there's more than one way to do these scale factors. You can use matching sides, or you can use the distance from the center to the image over the distance from the center to the original point. So O C prime over O C. It's really a matter, Jason, of what information you're given. And then you can make the choice about which one you think is easiest. I normally, if I'm given the option, I would pick the sides. But um, sometimes, Jason, you'll only be given information about OC prime or OC. You'll need to then use that. So how do you use the OC? So OC, well, in this case, it's given to us. And you've noticed they just straight up measured it, Jason. It's just there. If you are doing a problem like on your own, sometimes, you sometimes you have the measurement. Sometimes it'll give you the, the length. And you just then do it that way. So distance from the center to the image over distance from the center to the original. That's it. So let's take a look at that. I think I've got a practice one here for us to look at on the next page, page 581. <coughs> Actually, I want to, do I want to do that one? That one's too much. We're actually going to skip down to the your turn one, okay? Yep, yep, page 581. Page 581. <coughs> it's on the back of your homework page. Back of your first homework page there, folks. Sorry, yeah, I know. This is crazy when we start tearing pages out. You guys are doing a good job of keeping yourselves organized, though. Thank you. It's on the back of the first homework page. So, yeah, on the back of that page right there. Too. <coughs> okay, so we look right. If it's not a two or a three, Jason, I hear what you're saying. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that here. But here's... Here's the dilation. Now, unfortunately, I don't know why they did this for us, but they already drew in AA prime, CC prime, and BB prime. That kind of makes me frustrated. So the center of dilation here is going to be uh, what, Ramel? In this picture, what's the center of dilation? It's so. You got it. Center of dilation. Can we abbreviate Sure. If you want to. Yep. If you know what that means, that's fine. Okay, so the next thing we're supposed to do here is to find the measure of OA prime. So notice here we're going to do it the other way. Rather than comparing corresponding sides, we're going to use the distance from the center of dilation. So this is another way to find the scale factor. So the distance from O to A prime, I'm going to say 2.5 as well, Jason. I like that. 2.5 centimeters. It's on the back of the homework page. It's on the back of the first homework page. Yeah, so again, guys, if, you're, if you aren't, aren't able to find this paper, it's on the back of the first homework page. So it's right there, yep. And so then O to A, 7.5 we're going to say? I'm going to say 7.5 because I think that will make it work out nicely. Okay, if we say 7.5 centimeters. Okay, and then so for this, to find the scale factor here, Xander... Is it going to be 2.5 over 7.5, or is it going to be 7.5 over 2.5? Which one goes on top, which one goes on the bottom? Sorry? So, if so you're guessing, okay, so let me remind you, the scale factor <coughs> is always image over pre-image, or image over original, okay? Which one of these two numbers is representing an image? value. 7.5, what's giving that away that's the image value? How do you know? Oh, okay. How do you know 2.5 is the image value? The prime. Exactly right. Guys, that is key, okay? It's not too much thinking if you just look at the words. It's OA prime. That's an image, okay? It's 2.5 over the original 7.5. Okay, now, if you guys have calculators handy, it's super easy to simplify this. You just do 2.5 over 7.5. Oops, sorry, you can't see that. There it is. And you hit the math button right here, and then enter, enter, one-third is what that simplifies to. If you leave it as 2.5 over 7.5, I will not count it wrong. That's still right. It's just not simplified. That's you can also do point three repeating. Point three repeating, as long as you put a little line above it, yes. Mm -hmm. Questions on anything? 
Okay. All right. Match. Okay. So Matt, this is for you, buddy. And it's t I think you should go. You should probably just go ahead and head out now. Okay. Okay. So there's that. I'd like to do one more. Yes, sir. Which one, I'm sorry? What's your five, is it? Scale. Scale factor equals image uh, over... Under OA. Under OA, it's one-third there. One-third, one-third. <coughs> All right, so if you guys would, I would like to look at one more problem from the homework, if that's possible. <coughs> okay. If you guys could go back to this one page on the homework here, so again, it's the page that had the Texas flag and then this photograph picture. We're going to try just one of these up on top just to make sure we've got this down okay. On page uh, fi 584, it's the second homework page. It's on the back of the second homework page there. I just want to do one more together, and then we'll move on to what we're going to do today. <coughs> Wait, which page? Page 584, 584. 584. <coughs> so, exactly right. Yes. Okay. So, in these directions, I'm going to do um, 15 here just to kind of give a, just, just to kind of um, try this one. Uh, I guess we could do 14. Yeah, never mind. We did a shrink already. So, this one was a shrink. The pre last one we did was it was a reduction. We're going to do this enlargement right here. So we'll do 14. We'll do 14. Okay. So notice in here there are no lines drawn. So that's awesome. So now to find our center of dilation, what points do I need to connect here? So uh, Alicia, what points should I connect to help find our center of dilation? So for example, A prime, I should connect to what? To find that center of dilation. And if you want, here I can kind of show you the old picture that we did. What was A prime connected to in this picture? It's like one and a half. Can oh, you see there? Was, look, at, look at the line here. Look at this line that's drawn through A prime, right? What does it connect to? How, how do we create that, that line? Sorry? Yeah, A. Exactly right. So in this case, A prime and A will connect. So using your straight edge, <laughs> folks, go ahead and connect A and A prime, those two points. It does kind of look that way, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. So draw it nice and... I, I don't understand, like, the point well. Why are we drawing a line? Because what are we trying to find? We have to determine the center of dilation. Can we just and then the scale factor of the dilation, too. Mr. Wibb, okay. we're, like, measuring stuff. Can we round? Yes. Because, like, right now it's, like, 1.6. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I would say 1.6. Try 1.6 and see if it works. Because again, sometimes with our measuring, if we're off by a little bit, then it's going to mess up our scale factor too. So we'll, we'll, we'll try this one here and see. All right. What other points do I need to collect, connect here? Uh, Alicia, what else should I connect? C and C prime. Very good. So again, we'll do C and C prime. Okay. So very good. There's C and C prime. And Alicia, last two points I need to collect are, connect are what? B and B prime, you got it. Now, when I go to connect B and B prime here, where should they better intersect? We should we had better intersect at this point right down here, just like where the A and A prime intersected and C and C prime intersected. They better intersect right there. So hopefully, if we draw this accurately, yours did good. It should, it should. So if you drew it accurately, you'll know you did it accurately because they should all intersect. <coughs> okay. And then so Taylor, now that we've done this, where is our center of dilation? Yep, it's the dot. It's where all those points intersect. So we'll call that O, I guess, because that's what they, the book seems to favor calling our center of dilation. So I think they've been calling it the letter O, but I guess, you know, because it's hard to tell, you're right, it could be a zero. But they normally use letters to um, label points there, Ramel. 
So it's just a matter of drawing them very accurately, and they should. They should. So, um, it's pretty close. They're they're pretty close there. Just again, kind of draw a big enough point there, and it, it'll work. That's okay. <coughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, now, Julio, what's one pair, or what's one set of things we can measure to find the scale factor? So give me one option here. What can we measure to find the scale factor here? Okay, so great. Who remember the new thing that we learned here, OA and OA prime. That's one way we can measure it. So let's do it that way. Let's try it that way. And so it'll be, let's see, image over pre-image. So that means it should be O A prime over O A, right? So let's measure here. So O A prime, I'm going to use uh, centimeters here, and hopefully it's going to be nice. And that's inches, so I should probably put my ruler around. Um, <laughs> I, I see, I'm going to say like 5.8. Oh gosh. Okay, that should work too. Yeah, A prime C prime. But like, I got five. And, you know, I got yeah, I got five over one point seven. Okay. And my fraction was fifty over seventeen, which is probably not correct. Ooh, you know what? Oh. Uh, hold on a second. Sorry, you came. I'm just trying to get this uh, figured out here. Five point eight divided by. Eh. That's what I don't like about these. So here's the thing, guys. You will not be expected to measure stuff because these drawings are not super accurate and the measurements just don't create nice ratios here. Let me see what the book says the ratio is supposed to be. Oops. Okay. Okay. So I think actually I was supposed to say this was 5.7 centimeters here, and then this would be 1.9 centimeters. And I think that'll then work out. Um, I, it, I, I, I don't actually know, but they should, it's, the ratio is going to end up being 3 to 1, 3 over 1. Well, why did I get 50 over 17? So 50 over 17, it's very close to 3, you see 2.9. So again, it's just yeah. because of the way this picture is drawn, it's not drawn super accurately, I think. And no, so, I'd yeah, I'd still be okay with that. But again, in like a quiz or a test, you'll be given actual numbers, so you won't have to worry about measuring it because, again, with the way it's drawn, it's not I can, precise. So I can Yes. Yep. Yep. Because again, it's what is really a cave. What I'm looking for is that you're matching up the correct things. Okay. So here we did 5.7 or 1.9, which actually does simplify to three. The rounding, actually, in this case, the rounding, yes, would have worked. Mm -hmm. Yep. It would have worked. Oh, okay. Well, for mine, it would have worked. So. Okay. So just real quick here, guys. One last thing I want to point out before we move on is that. Um, you'll notice here that I did. Uh, Julio asked us to do O A prime over O A. Did we have to use those specific measurements? So no, we could have done O C prime over O C, or O B prime over O B, or like Ikeva did, A prime C prime over A C, or A prime B prime over A B, or B prime C prime over B C. So guys, there's a lot of options here to find that scale factor, but it's always about trying to match up corresponding parts, image over pre-image. Now here's a question to you: Can I do like? O A over A A prime. So that can I do this piece O A over A A prime and get that to give me a scale factor? No. no okay. O A is a distance from the center to the original. A A prime is not from the center to the image. It's from the from another point, that original to the image. So you always want to measure from the center there. O A O A prime. Okay. Or you can do A B and A prime B prime. That also works too. The corresponding sides. Okay. So if you want to leave it as three, that's fine, or three over one. Okay. Go ahead and put that away for now. Say it one more time.
Yes, well, I'm not, we're not quite there yet. I have one more little thing I want to show us here, okay? So, guys, if you would please get a piece of paper out because this is not in our books, okay? So, a piece of paper out. This is not in our books. Okay, so we're going to call this, and I know you guys are still right, uh, still getting caught up here, so. Where are we going? Oh, I can't do that. That's illegal. Oh, I could do it, but. Yes, sir. If you write it down, sure, I'll give you an extra copy. Okay. <coughs> this is really, guys, again, it's really very similar ha -ha, to the stuff we've been learning already. All right. It's really, it's not going to be too terrible, I promise. So we're going to look at the relationship between the scale factor of areas of shapes and also the scale factor of the perimeter of shapes. Up to this point, we have not been finding, we've only been finding scale factors of like sides. And so we want to see, does the scale factor change with perimeters? Does the scale factor change with areas? Okay. And so we're going to start off with, okay, we're going to be given that a, B, C, D. <laughs> okay. So, Derek, what, is this, what does this symbol mean right here? Uh, similar. Similar. So, that means this shape, whatever, when I draw it here, this shape will be similar to this shape. Okay? And, Derek, if the shapes are similar, that means what's going to be true about their angles? They'll be more than just similar. They'll be equal, yeah. <clears throat> and then their sides will be <laughs> proportional. Okay. These are supposed to be rectangles. I didn't do a great job there, but you get the idea. I didn't do a great job with mine, so it's okay. I'm hungry. I'm Mr. Witt. Nice to meet you, hungry. Dad humor. Shh. All right, Derek, come on now. <laughs> Derek, I mean, not when you feel like it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So there's our two rectangles, and these are similar. So those are our two similar shapes. Derek said, right, or what, after I asked him, you know, with a similarity and stuff like that, he was like saying, okay, angles will be the same. Corresponding angles are the same. So A is equal to E, B is equal to F, D is equal to H, C will equal G. Okay, and in fact, in a rectangle, we know all the angles in a rectangle are what measure? 90. Yeah, they're right angles, 90 degrees. Exactly right. They're going to be right angles, 90 degrees. Okay. <coughs> now, in addition to like this being true, so I'm going to go ahead and maybe mark in these congruences here, right, just so we can like see. Okay, like that. We also have sides that should be in the same proportion here too. So for example, Maddie, um, AB, what does that correspond to over here? 
Yeah, so then that means that um, AB over EF should equal then, what's another, what's another ratio that should equal then? AB over EF should equal what other ratio of sides here? BC over <coughs> FG, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. And then, uh, Derek, what's another one? Uh, I said DC and HG. Okay. So, we, yeah, we want to be, yeah, so uh, CD. Well, I'm, I'm going to do it the other way just because I like to keep it in alphabetical order. But you're, you're not wrong there, Derek. That's right. Okay. And then one more here. It's, uh, what is it? We'll say HE. Oh, sorry, sorry, not HE. A, or DA over HE. Right? So then all these ratios should be equal as well. Those angles should be congruent. Those ratios are equal. Now, that's obviously, that's, that's review, right? We know that. Okay. <clears throat> And then so we can also, right, now that we've talked about dilations, we can say what is the scale factor of A, B, C, D to E, F, G, H? Okay. All right. So if that's the case here, if, if it's written this way, what do you guys feel intuitively? Which one of those things is the original? Which one is going to be the image? What do you want to say there? Maybe I'll um, pick someone here. So, like, so Billy, for example, which one of these do you think, the way this is written, which one do you think would be like the original? Which one would then be the image? Not sure? Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Skylar's not here. Valerie, what do you say? Which one of these, when, you, when it's written this way, what is the scale factor of A, B, C, D, 2, E, F, G, H? Which one do you think is like, makes the, which one of these would be like the original, which one would be like the image, based on the wording here? Is the, is the image, you'd say, and then E, F, G, H would be the original? So it could, be, it could be written that way. You could say it that way. I think the wording is a little confusing, to be honest. It should be the other way. And it's going like two EFGH. Yeah. It's being transformed to. I kind of like that thinking in my mind. So Valerie, do you see that too? So we'll start with that. So if that's the case, then Valerie, to find the scale factor, remember scale factor is equal to image over original, right? And we're saying that ABCD then is the original, and then EFGH is the image. <clears throat> okay, so then in this case, Valerie, what's a measurement from the image that we could use? 10.5, great. And we can put that on top of what corresponding? 7, very good. <clears throat> okay, now, does that simplify? I think it does. <coughs> it does. So it's 1.5 or as a fraction, 3 halves. Sorry, okay, but yes, what was your question? So in this case, because I, I, I agree the wording is not so clear about which one's the original, which one's the image, right? Yeah. I, I feel intuitively it would make sense to go A, B, C, D, 2, E, F, G, H, but I know other teachers would, would argue the opposite direction. So I, I think that I will try to make it more clear should you, should you need to, okay, you know, but to make it. would it matter? Well, because that would change the number. Three halves is what I wrote, but if you say that this is the image and this is the original, right, if I'm saying this is the original, this is the image, it would flip it and make it two-thirds, <coughs> so you get two different numbers. So that's, that's the key there. So I like this one because, again, we're taking, it like the, in my mind, like Ryan was saying, we're taking ABCD, we're transforming it to EFGH. So ABCD, to me, feels like the original, and that feels like the image. So. <coughs> All right, now, what is the scale factor of their perimeters? What is the scale factor of the perimeters? C 
So let's find that out. So the perimeter of ABCD <clears throat> okay how do we find the perimeter of a rectangle <clears throat> How did you get that? Do we want to do seven times wait, four? No, wait, perimeter go, what do you do for the perimeter oh, of a shape? Add up all the sides. So seven plus four, 11. 11? 22? Where do you get 22 from? I see four and seven. Add them up, that's 11. That's the perimeter. No, it's not. You have to do both sides. Oh, right. These two sides are not labeled, but guess what? They have measures, right. So it, it is 22. And the reason why I did that, guys, is because I always see students, not everyone, but I always see students, what they, if they don't have the other two sides written, they'll just say 4 plus 7, that's the answer. It's not. It's 4 plus 7 plus 4 plus 7. So it gives us, yes, 22. And then let's find the perimeter of EFGH. So 10.5 plus 10.5 plus 6 plus 6 33. I know, I know. Ryan's being tricky over there. Messing you up. <coughs> okay, so again, like we did before, we did ABCD was the original, EFGH was the image, so should I do 22 over 33 or 33 over 22? Right, 33 image over 22. So let's see here, 33 over 22 then. That's going to be the scale factor, which is what? 3 over 2. Weird. It's the same as the sides. <coughs> they're both divisible by 11. Yeah, they're both divisible by 11 there. So, what do you think we can say then about the scale factor of the perimeter? It's the same as the scale factor of the what? So here's a key idea here. If two shapes are similar then the ratio of the perimeters I'll scoot in, zoom in here some. Is this the new part? So this is like our key kind of takeaway I want to show here. If two polygons are similar, then the ratio of their perimeters is blank to the ratio of their corresponding sides. <clears throat> okay, so let's summarize here. Two shapes are similar. The ratio of the perimeters, we got here three halves, is blank to the ratio of the corresponding sides. How are they related? They're the same. It's equal. It's equal. Okay, so that's key, guys, right there. The ratio of the perimeters is the same as the ratio of the corresponding sides. So these notes say scale factor of area and perimeter. So let's look at what area. Let's look at area then real quick. Let's see if area is the same. Oh, so, so Ryan says they're not the same. So let's go to that. So what's the scale factor of the areas? <coughs> Okay, so let's look at the scale factor of the areas. All right, so let's see here. 
area of A, B, C, D. All right, so to find the area of a rectangle, Matt, how do you find the area of a rectangle? What? How do you find the area of a rectangle? For example, A, B, C, D here, how do we find the area of that rectangle? What would we do? The perimeter is not the same thing as the area. No, I know, but can't you find the area of the perimeter? Using these measurements, yes. What is the area of a rectangle? Area is equal to what times what? And a rectangle. Yeah, length times height or length times width, whatever you want to say there. So in this case, for A, B, C, D, we're going to multiply what by times what? Seven times four. Seven times four. Which is what, Matt? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Okay, and then let's look at the area of EFGH. Okay. So, Krishna, the area of EFGH is what? How we find that? You got it here? So there's, here's EFGH. What do we do to find the area of EFGH? Yep, 10.5 times 6. 63. 63. Thank you. <coughs> so, right, so we're going to set up our ratio then. We're going to set it up as 63, right? That's our image over our original 28 area. So let's see what happens now. 63 over 28. So it does simplify. So 63 over 28 simplifies to 9 over 4. Hmm, is that the same as our old scale factor of 3 halves? Yeah. Is 9 fourths the same as 3 halves? If I try to simplify 9 fourths here, guys. Yeah. All right, hang on. So, yeah, so well, go ahead, Ryan. What were you saying? You see that? So they're not the same, but shh, there is still a relationship here. Can anyone see the relationship? How can I take this scale factor and make it this scale factor? What can I do to that three halves to make it become nine fourths? Does anyone see the relationship here between three halves and nine fourths? So actually, nine fourths and three halves are like nine fourths is simplified as much as it will simplify. But okay, how do you get three halves to nine fourths? Yeah. Uh, what can we do to? Three yeah, not double. We're gonna square them. We're gonna square them. Exactly right. So the scale factor of the areas is the square of the scale factors of the perimeters or of the sides. If you take three and square it, what is three squared? Nine. What is two squared? Four. Okay, so I'm going to write that out here, and that's going to be it then. We'll stop there. <coughs> okay. If two shapes are similar, again, this is the other takeaway here. If two shapes are similar, then the ratio of the areas is equal to the square. So again, if two shapes are similar, then the ratio of the areas is equal to the square of the ratio of their corresponding sides. So again, if two shapes are similar, then the ratio of the areas is equal to the square of the ratio of the corresponding sides. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so if two shapes are similar, then the ratio of the areas is equal to the square of the ratio of their corresponding sides. Okay.
Okay. So let me give you guys uh, a assignment here. It's not very much. <laughs> Practice. It's not the whole thing, remember. I'm going to pass it down. Pass it down.